So let's have a look at Las Meninas. It's a painting by Diego Velázquez, who's Spanish 17th century, and it's in the Prado Museum, and it's considered one of the best paintings in the world by a lot of painters and a lot of our historians. I've seen charts of this painting that tells you where your eye goes to like 17 places. Um, I don't believe maybe 17, but I believe three or four, and I wanna take a look at that in a minute and look at the composition of this painting. That is Velázquez there painting the painting, and that's the king and queen of Spain in the mirror and the infanta, who's really sort of the, the focus of this painting. And Velázquez painted this, and then sadly this painting was cut down, which is ridiculous. But here's someone's rendition of what it may have looked like. I think this is expanded out a little too far to the sides. Uh, but at any rate, it's, it's horrible that it was cut down, and let's have a look at it as it is, because there's a lot to talk about with the composition. So here's a small copy I did of Las Meninas, and I was careful with the composition of the painting in its current state. I wish I would add a little bit onto the sides. A lot of artists have copied this. Here's Goya doing an etching of it. Uh, Goya copied all of Velasquez's paintings. He did etchings of every one of them. Here's a John Singer Sargent copy of Las Meninas, so a lot of artists have looked at this painting. And the setup of this painting has been looked at a lot as well. Here's someone's rendition of where you th they think the spectator would be in the painting. Because with the king and queen in the mirror, there's some speculation that looking at this painting, you are either the king or queen of Spain at the time. So if we look back at the painting and we see them there in the mirror, it's possible. So the composition of this painting is really interesting because Velázquez is great at guiding your eye around and having you look at the Infanta first then maybe out to the doorway and then to the uh, handmaids around her, the Las Meninas. And it's a lot like what Hemingway said about when you sit down to write something. He said, when you walk into a room, you notice something first, you notice something second, and you notice something third. So when you sit down to write about it, you remember the way that you experience things so that you can convey the subjective part of your experience in a way that the reader will take to be objective. And Velasquez is great at doing this in a visual way. People take him as a realist, but this is a very controlled way of showing you what he's showing you. He's really guiding you through it and showing you things the way that he wants you to see them. So it's dramatic painting, and Velasquez sets the painting up like a stage set to show you things in particular. But it's so well done that the way that he's controlling the experience for you is we sort of move right through it and take it for granted as being realistic. So let's take a look at the tools he's using to do that, to be more specific. So you can use some of these strategies in your own painting or think about how you're guiding attention in your own paintings. So perspective, where he puts the vanishing point, which is pretty much over the Infanta. Contrast, notably again around the Infanta, she's sort of the highest contrast. Color and controlled clarity of focus where things are harder or softer edge. We're used to this in photography where something has a soft edge, we tend to sort of gloss right past it and look at the things that are in sharper focus. So let's break these down and look at them um, one by one. So first of all, perspective. If we look at where Velasquez put the vanishing point, it's right over the Infanta. So perspective is a way of showing three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional surface, but also if you look at the conventions of perspective, all these lines converge on a spot. So where you put that spot, essentially you're pointing to it in a painting. So that's one of the tools to use to guide attention. So be careful where you put your vanishing point, as Velasquez was. He's really steering your attention right through the painting, floating over the Infanta with the vanishing point here. Another important tool is contrast. You guys know from design that your eye is drawn to contrast when you look at something. So Velasquez has, again, placed all the contrast on the Infanta the lightest lights and darkest darks are on her. So that again is something you should think about in your own paintings, where you put the contrast, because it's again a way of guiding attention. And this painting's very much like a stage set. And he will take a closer look at the Infanta and pull out, because you really go to the Infanta first with all the, uh, the contrast, soft edges, perspective over her, and the way that Velasquez is using color as well. Oh color another great way of guiding attention 
the most saturated red is the teapot that's being handed the Infanta. So if we look closer at it, you can see that that red is the brightest red and the other reds around it are a little bit desaturated. So he's very much pointing with color out to the very sort of soft red in the mirror there and the more desaturated red of the little boy with his foot against the dog. So the big takeaway here for color and guiding attention is to watch where you keep your saturation the highest because you're essentially going to be pointing to a spot that way. So let's look at the controlled clarity of focus. So I have a dog and if my dog was with me on a stage, no one would be looking at me at all. And Velasquez has very soft edges on the dog and really soft edges on some of these figures around the Infanta and very hard edges on the Infanta herself. So that control clarity of focus is really helping him guide attention to the Infanta and away from other things in the painting. Also back to color for a second, because if you look at how soft some of the edges are as things go into darkness and how the darkness desaturates, he's really great at controlling everything. Quick side note, those paintings in this painting back there are Rubens copies of Titians that uh, Rubens did on his trip to Spain where he and Velazquez met. And he and Velazquez are both great models of very ambitious artists who really rose up through through their art and uh, use it as a way to be upwardly mobile. So one of the good ways to look at these paintings to start to figure out what's going on in them is just to like figure out where the middle is. And when I found the middle of this, I noticed if you drop a straight line down to the middle, it goes right through the right eye of the Infanta. And not only that, but these diagonal lines, really Velasquez places the figures on these diagonal lines like a sort of big pyramid the tip of which comes right down into the Infanta. So if you look at where the middle of the painting is from bottom to top, we'll notice that Velasquez is the only figure that crosses from the bottom half of the painting to the top half of the painting. So he's definitely giving himself some, some weight visually and some importance. He painted in that cross on what he's wearing there, which was his knighthood uh, later on after the painting was done. Also, if we look at that left side and divide it up again, we'll notice that Velasquez is in, is in the middle of the left half of the painting, right between his eyes. And again, Velasquez rose up through painting. So with 17th century, this is one of the few ways if you weren't born into royalty, you'd ever come into contact with kings and popes. And Velasquez had the best job in the world then, which was painter to Philip IV, who was the most powerful man in the world at that time. And Philip valued their relationship and I want to take a closer look at this with you and give you guys some pictorial strategies, some things you can hopefully try out in your own paintings. This painting is pretty big. This painting is about 12 feet high by 9 feet wide. It's right at the threshold of how big you can make a painting and still have the first thing you see be what Velasquez is showing you rather than that it's a big painting. And this painting is in the Prado Museum. I do hope you'll get a chance to see it in person sometime. Velasquez is a great artist to learn from. He knows so much about painting and the tools he has available to him. He's using them all perfectly well to the point where they're almost invisible. So I do hope you get a chance to see this in person because there's really no replacement for the direct experience of a work of art and this painting has beautiful facture, the surface as well. So I hope you'll get a chance to see it. And I hope this has been a useful way of looking at it to help you gain some things from it as a painter.